All right, good to see everybody out today. Um, why is it so cold? This is crazy. It's so cold outside. I've never seen anything like it. I don't ever remember being this wet. It rains every day. All we do is see rain. You know, I, I always say the quote by Mark Twain, everybody complains about the weather, but nobody's ever done anything about it. Huh? Bandstand. They move things around. They move things around. I told you a long time ago they took those risers out. It's only been a four month project. Took his no, they're behind the pulpit. It's a different set of drums. Yeah, he got a new set. Yeah. They're silver. Like what? <laughs> What'd you say? I don't like it. You don't like it? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> they're drums you hit. Yeah, the old ones are the youth building. They're red. You can still hear <laughs> I'm not ready for all these questions. <laughs> I sit there and I preach there. <laughs> Those are my two areas. Uh, yeah, we're going to move that. Yeah, I was meant to have the boys come and do that. I got to get... When it comes to stuff like that, I got to move it very far and make Caleb and Jack do it. Yeah. All right, we're going to take prayer request. The first prayer request I'd like for you to remember, we've been praying for Wyatt Reed. Um, little boy, I think he's 14 years old. Um, he had a PET scan today, um, and he has cancer all over him. Um, I, I, um, it is um, Jesse and Heather Reed's son, uh, Sonia Reed's grandson. Um, I'm trying to think here. I got a text from Amy. Wyatt PET scan came back. He has it in three spots. In his spine, he has it on his shoulder blade, his hip, and both lungs. And so, he's 14. <clears throat> so, we want to remember, obviously, him in our prayers. We want to remember that family in our prayers. And um, just pray God's touch upon all of them. Let's just do that right now, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, we intercede tonight, God, for Wyatt and for his entire family. We know, God, there's much fear and there's much worry. And Lord, we just ask, dear God, Lord, that you would just touch that little boy. We pray, dear God, that you touch his body. We know, Lord, that you are bigger than cancer. And so, Lord, we put him in your hands. We ask, God, whether it be through your divine healing, whether it be through doctors and medicine, God, we pray healing upon this young man in Jesus' name. God, I pray, Lord, for his family. I pray, dear God, Lord, you would remove fear, worry, anxiety. I pray, God, that you replace it with peace that passeth all understanding. I pray, dear God, Lord, that you'd be with him in a very special, very profound way. We thank you for being close to the brokenhearted, close to those who are hurting. And so, Lord, tonight we just intercede and we ask on their, on, 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 on their behalf, Lord, that you would just do a work and a touch. And we come to you boldly, believing that you are a God who is able and who can. And so, Lord, tonight we just pray this special prayer over, this, over him and over this family. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we also want to continue to remember the young man Lance Baldwin um, battling cancer. Um, Reese Albright, um, another one who is battling cancer, young lady down in Goreville. Um, Reese is back at school. Yes, I, I, I've heard that. We want to continue to remember Sue Miracle in our prayers. If anybody would like to go visit Sue, I know she would probably take your visit. Uh, best place, best time to visit is between 11 and 1. She sits down in the... Uh, the food, the common area, you walk straight in, you can't miss her. Um, and so she's at Sunshine Gardens, which is just behind Cracker Barrel, and it's an easy in, easy out. Uh, so remember her. Remember Dennis Kirk. He's been having uh, just more and more falls. So we want to remember Brother Dennis in our prayers. Um, I put on the prayer chain Tammy Campbell's mother, Janet Brown. If you could just remember, continue to remember Janet Brown. They put her on a ventilator. She fell and broke a hip a couple weeks ago. Um, and just uh, ended up getting sepsis. Um, 
and then it led to having breathing issues as well. What other prayer requests do we have tonight? Lyndall Ferguson. Ferguson. I'm glad you said Lyndall. Um, put him on the prayer chain earlier. He's over in uh, Heron Hospital. Remember Brandon, your nephew. Les? Micah Spiller. Health and Directions. Bonnie Gilbert, you said, Miss Lois? Do you have another one, Les? Salvation for Allie and Abby. I want to praise the Lord for Michael's baby. They uh, had to take it by take her by C-section, but when they they were trying to manipulate her and trying all kinds of stuff to get her, and when she was born, her cord was around her neck twice. So I just praise the Lord that He protected that little angel, and I pray that those two realize God had His hand on. Them. Amen. That's exactly right. Hallelujah. New grandbaby. Brad? Uh, I go to Monday to the soccer ground to see what's going on with my esophagus. This will be the third attempt. The first two times they had a cancer prison mission to go. Okay. Brad Taylor, esophagram. Richie V. And then his finger, he, they're going to re-x-ray it and see where it's come, the one he broke. So. I was talking to him before service. He said that here in a few years, you could tell those grandkids it'd be all deformed, you know. And <laughs> Caleb's ball coach, whenever he coaches ball or his pinky, just is straight out this way. I don't know what's wrong with it. And so he's always like pointing at somebody, you know. <laughs> I give him a hard time about it. Lou Manis. She needs a place to live. The early neighbors. Okay. And the other one is Brenda Chamnus. She fell and broke her wrist at her church Sunday. Brenda Chamnus. She had that surgery on her wrist. Pretty wild service. I guess so. I'm just I was <laughs> had to put a rod in it, she said. Janet? Unspoken. Y'all got those? We want to continue to remember those people in Ukraine, the Ukraine and Russia deal. There's also been a pretty big leak this week. That could be a big deal. Um, Regarding Roe v. Wade, we want to continue to pray for that situation. Yes, sir. Won't be a problem, man. You're going to do awesome. I hope so. We do have a lot of stuff going on Saturday. We have men's breakfast, right, Clyde? Yes. Okay. From 8.30 to 9.30. We do have our spaghetti dinner and dodgeball tournament. We do have quarterly meeting. Um... I'm sure we can make you throw a few other things in there if we need to. One second. What, what, Lois? Barbara Colsey. Ben's wife is doing better. Um, Stephanie Eldridge, she continues to need prayer, but it's very scary. But it seems like God just reached out and touched her. And so praise the Lord for that. It doesn't seem that way. God touched her. Um, and she's kind of snapped out of everything, so... Bless. Government. government. Amen, buddy. Ms. Page. We've had three deaths in the last two days. Did your cousin pass away? My cousin passed away very soon after the day. He has had a cousin whose husband passed away. The cousin that was killed last night was almost like the last one there. Hmm. That's enough. Enough. So remember the Page family. Also, I'm glad you said motorcycle accident. Continue to remember Sonny Jones, Sarah Jones' wife, a husband. Can you comment anything on our theft? Our theft? 
Yeah, they stole our Cadillac converter in knuckleheads. Well, Greg pulled the footage, and we looked at the footage, and, um, you know, we had a picture of the guy's face. Well, I just get mad when they do that stuff. I mean, it's silly. You know what I mean? Especially, we help a lot of people. And if somebody needed something, we'd give it to them. I mean, we really would, unless they're like using it for drugs or something like that. So for them to come in and do it is just aggravating. And what they did is they drove over here. Well, I'm just, I'm getting there. <laughs> they drove over here and they dropped two guys off. They were in a white Monte Carlo, early 2000s. And they pull over there and they do a loop around the youth building. They come back, back in beside the van and they throw a Sawzall out underneath it. Then they drive off. And these two guys, they walk up there. One gets under and one's standing there looking, looking. I guess they get spooked about halfway through and they take off running. They leave the saw there. So then they drive up and down 37. They come back. And they park on 37, one comes over and finishes it off. Which, normally, the van would be in the garage, but we've been redoing the food thing over there. And we were literally, they put the garage door in the next day where we could get all that stuff out of there. So, it is what it is, but still, it's our, you shouldn't have to worry about locking everything up. It's crazy, but here we are in this world. Anyway, they showed their face, a pretty good, fairly good picture of their face. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put this knucklehead on Facebook, see if anybody notices it. I didn't know it was going to be shared like nine billion times. And so the next thing you know, the news is out here. And they're like, hey, can we do an interview with you? And I'm like, sure. Then the Southern Illinois comes. And then some news organization on Facebook comes. Well, finally the sheriff's office calls me. And I was like, hey, didn't think you guys were going to call. But, you know, anyway... We have given them, they're actually waiting on me to email over the footage. And we've got several people's names. You know, everybody sends you a message and says, hey, this is so-and-so. Whether it's them or not, none of the names that I've been given have matched. So, you know, in America, we have due process. We're innocent until proven guilty. So I forwarded those names on as well. And so hopefully we'll find something out. To be honest with you, more than likely they won't be caught. I mean, it just, they've done it to a lot of churches around here, like 18. So, and this, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, so there's nothing really more to share than that. Yeah. But I just, you know, I was filling everybody in on that story. Uh, a week ago, a week ago yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. We've already got it fixed, though, so that's good. Praise God. One guy posted on Facebook, he said, check the preacher, he probably did it. <laughs> and Eric Holmes said, they don't know you very well. I said, he don't have the capability. <laughs> I, just, I just started laughing, which is true. I'm like, Cadillac what? You know, I didn't even know how to spell it. I typed it out, Cadillac, you know. It's catalytic. Yeah. No, Jeff, I could have fit underneath there. I mean, I would have got my arms underneath at least. We got to pray. Y'all are on me tonight. <laughs> Dave, you got any other questions? Yeah. I mean, why can't you ever ask spiritual questions, you know? <laughs> All right, let's pray together, okay? Heavenly Father, it is so good to be in your house. It's so good that we can gather here and we can have fun and we can enjoy each other. Thank you, Lord, for our church, and thank you, God, for what it stands for. God, tonight we lift up these requests to you, every single one of them. Lord, for those physical situations, those who are battling different illnesses and sicknesses and surgeries and recovering from and cancer. And Lord, we just, we just pray you're going to touch upon each one of their bodies. We know, Lord, you're the word. Your word says you're the God that healeth the year, a God that makes a difference. You're very present help in time of trouble. And so, Lord, tonight, in Jesus' name, I just pray a specific touch upon these folks tonight. I pray that you'd be with them. I pray that you would encourage them, that you would give them strength to face whatever they may be facing. I pray for the ones who have recently um, had great loss in their life and suffered through loss. I pray, dear God, Lord, that you touch them. I pray, dear God, Lord, you comfort them only the way that you can. You know, we know your word says you're God in life and you're God in death. 
And so, Lord, we just pray your special touch upon them. I, I give you the praise for Richie and Lisa's new, new, new grandbaby. And I pray, dear God, we thank you, God, for a safe delivery. And, Lord, we just praise you for life. I thank you, God, for the recent news, God, that with the possibility of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And, we, we, Lord, we continue to ask forgiveness for that sin. And we pray that this abomination will cease to exist, not only in our country, but throughout the world. And, Lord, we pray for those unspoken requests that are on our hearts tonight. We pray, dear God, Lord, that you touch each and every one of them. You know those situations and those circumstances. Lord, I pray for the salvation needs tonight. Lord, the ones that were called out specifically by Brother Les for Abby and Allie. We pray, dear God, Lord, that they might come to a knowing relationship in you. I pray for the many, God, who are on our hearts and minds tonight. God, who are so close to receiving you as their personal Savior. And I pray, God, that they would come to a knowing relationship in you. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for what you have done and are doing. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all said, Amen. 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 <laughs> Dave, you did an extraordinary job last week. I uh, love to hear Dave teach and preach. Um, I played golf with Dave. I have yet to beat him in eight years. <laughs> you prayed for him to come. Huh? You prayed for him to come. There he is. Oh, wow. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen, Melody. Amen. 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 In which book did the casting of lots first receive divine approval? Randy? What? Book of Numbers. Numbers 26, 53 through 56 to be exact. 26, 53 through 56. All right. Which of the seven churches of Revelation does God criticize for being lukewarm? Laodicea is correct. One to nothing. Which of Revelation's seven seals reveal a rider on a red horse? Randy? Second, Second is correct. One to one. What is the English translation for the name Naomi chose for herself? What is the English translation for the name Naomi chose for herself? They really want the meaning of it. Olivia, how are you feeling about this one? <laughs> Ty? Bitter's correct. What's the last book of the Old Testament? I'm, I don't write the questions. Malachi is correct. Two to two. Who saw a vision of a sheet lowered to earth by its four corners? You said Peter? Okay, Peter it is. See, that's, how many is that? One, two, that's three to, three to two, three to two. I noticed last week Dave wrote it down. Had a plan, didn't you, Dave? Which book in the Bible contains the following? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews, what verse, what chapter and verse? Come on, it's an easy one. 11, 11, 1. You're exactly right, very good. Three to three. What was the second thing that Saul did as a king which displeased God? 
second thing. We know what the first thing was. But what was the second thing? The first thing was he told him not to keep any, uh, anything from the Amicalites and he saved King Agag. What, Heather, you were thinking of the first thing? Take a guess, Fritz. That's a good guess. It's not correct, but that's a good guess. He abstained his army not to eat. He tore, told his army, he ordered his army not to, not to eat. Abstained him from food. All right, still three to three. Which tribe of Israel remained loyal to Rehoboam when the kingdom was divided after Solomon's death? Which tribe of Israel remained loyal to Rehoboam when the kingdom was divided after Solomon's death? Judah! Fantastic job, Timbo. That's four to three. What prophet had a vision of four creatures, each with the head of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle? Which prophet had a vision of four creatures, each with the head of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle? Go ahead, we need an answer. Isaiah is incorrect. Ezekiel. All right, you still got the lead four to three. How many generations were there between Abraham and Joseph? <coughs> Bob? Sure. Three's right. I just want to make sure you're sure. <laughs> what event promoted an angel to tell Joseph and Mary to return to Egypt? To return from Egypt. What event took place that told him to return from Egypt? Go ahead, Jacob. <laughs> Dennis? What what event what told him what, what told him to come back? The king had died. The king had died. That's right, Herod had died. Yeah. That's five to four. Spell Caiaphas. Just one person. Stand up, spell, or speak out. Caiaphas, go ahead. C-A-I-P-H-A-S. Oh, I missed an A. C-A-I-P-H-A-S. Close is only good for hand grenades and nuclear war. It's your chance to tie. Last question. What book says that the full preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish, but to us it is the power of God? Mm. For the tie. Yeah. You're currently behind. Hmm.
Romans is incorrect. Anybody know? First Corinthians. Ty, where you at on that? You know one, you just throw it out there. If you have your Bibles, turn to First Peter, chapter 5. Staying alive in chapter 5. Peter's writing to scattered Christians abroad. He's talked about living holy. He's talked about submission, submitting ourselves. He talked a great deal in chapter 3 and 4 about suffering for the cause of Christ. Um, and suffering here on this earth is worth doing because of what God has laid up for his children in heaven. Amen. He's going to finish up the book of Peter and he starts by talking to elders who are in the churches. It says, and now a word, who, a word to you who are elders in the church. Um, Chapter 5, verse 1 says, The elders which are among you, I exhort, uh, King James. It says, I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ, and I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. Not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over them because over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you younger men must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you serve each other in humility. For God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. And so he spends those first six verses, or five verses, just encouraging not only leaders to um, be proud of the flock that they have um, to serve, but not to serve um, proudly, but to serve humbly, um, to look after it. Don't do it begrudgingly, but doing it, do it willingly. Um, that's just not for pastors, but it's for elders of the church, um, those who are well-seasoned in their faith, that they would look after their flock and seek him out. And he also directs those younger Christians, those younger, younger ones, um, that they should look, for, uh, the, look to the authority of the elders. Um, all of you serve each other in humility. God opposes the proud but favors the humble. One of the signs, I think, of a good body of Christ is to see older and younger together. Um, Titus 2 says that old men should be teachers of young men and older women should be teachers of younger women. Um, typically, one of the things I love to do the most is to sit with people who are older than me. They typically forgot more than I'll ever know. That's why I hang around with Dave so much. Um, in all, or Frank, in all truthfulness, um, in all truthfulness, um, there's a lot that can be learned from elders, from life experience and the things and the knowledge they've, they've achieved through their experience. So um, if you are of older age, don't ever feel like God doesn't have a purpose or plan for you because you have a lot to offer and a lot to bring to the table. I know there's not much of a younger crowd in here, but the younger crowd should always be seek, willing to seek um, um, direction for their elders and admonition from the elders because there's a lot to, lot can be learned. One of the things that I love here at White Ash is that we have a great mix of older and younger and middle-aged um, and we see all ages of the church um, and all of them are of utmost importance. All of them play different roles but they have the same importance um, and that's one of the things that as elders it's a very good thing for elder people who are well seasoned in their faith to encourage, to share um, reach out to younger people who are weak in their faith because all of us at one time were what? Weak in our faith, but through somebody leading us, guiding us, and directing us, and it has helped us in our life. God opposes the proud. We should always be willing to serve each other in humility. Um, so he says, so humble yourselves, in verse 6, under the mighty power of God, then at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. And so... We see that there's coming a day when God will lift us up. Let God doing the honoring in our lives. If you're going to be proud, be proud in Christ, not proud um, on your own will. The Bible says pride cometh before the fall, um, a haughty spirit before the fall. If you're in the NLT, it actually says pride, I, I believe. But I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know the verse right now. It's in Proverbs. Anyway, too much pride will lead to what? Lead to destruction. Um, 
So he says, be humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. So humility, practice yourself in humility. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast your care upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Um, you've heard me talk about this verse many times in sermons. I've stacked songbooks on Brother Eric and Jack, right? Amen. I've got to take this jacket off. I was cold and now I'm blazing. Y'all hot? No? Okay, just me. All right. So, cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. So we see that Paul's closing this down. Humble yourselves, cast your care upon the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walketh around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we take these three things, this little outline that uh, Peter has given us here. I think I said Paul a second ago, forgive me. These little three outlines that Peter has given us. The first one, humble yourself. Cast your cares and be sober. Humble yourself, cast your cares and be sober. Humble yourself, cast your cares and be sober. Sober. So the very first position that he has in life is if you're, so, if, if, if you're humble, then you're really... You're worried about others' well-being more than your own well-being. Would you agree? You're willing to serve others and not really seek to have yourself served out. Um, We live in a society where it's, what can you do for me, right? Everybody wants something done for them. But there's something good about serving others. There's something good about serving in in the limelight, not in the spotlight, where nobody else can see you. In a humble spirit, working and honoring God and seeking Him out, humbling yourself. And then... He's secondly, he knows that these people are burdened. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. He tells them not only should you walk in humility, but you should also walk in dependence on God. How many of you have a care tonight? Amen. And the Bible says that we should cast our cares over on you. I've said it a a few hundred times, it seems like. Not just set your problems down, but the idea there is casting. To push over, to throw up on. Um, It kind of... Projects the idea of with some type of force or some type of purpose. You cast something. When you cast the fishing pole, you don't just throw it up. You, you look and you cast something right where you want it. Cast your cares. God, this is my care. This is my burden. This is my worry. I'm transferring it from me to you. One of the hardest things that we have is we like to pick our cares up and take them with us. Amen? Our, humili- our, our humanity makes us do that. Our flesh makes us do that. And as we begin to walk and... A lot of times we say, well, Lord, I have all these burdens, all these cares, all these troubles. And we go to pray about it, but we don't really leave them with God. A lot of times we don't leave them with God because we don't realize the power and authority that God has and how he can make a difference in our life. But we have to leave them there, cast our cares upon the Lord. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walketh around like a roaring lion. Um, So one of the most specific verses about our adversary, Satan, He walketh around like a roaring lion. Notice the warning that he gives us in verse 8. Be sober. It's the idea of sobriety. Tell me about being sober. How many of you are sober right now? Please, everybody, raise your hand. Um, If you're sober, you're what? You're of the right mind, all right? You're not intoxicated. You're not drunk off of something. Um, You are instead very aware of your uh, surroundings. You're aware of your reality. Um... In the very first morning, be sober, be aware, um, have a realization. Satan, your adversary, walketh around like a roaring lion. When you get up in the morning, you need to realize that the Satan walketh around like a what? Roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Um, Every day, be sober, be vigilant. What does it mean to be vigilant? Be on the lookout, be aware. Let me see it. Where's he at? Who? Your adversary. Not your advocate, but the opposite of advocate is adversary. Your adversary. Your enemy. The one who's out to get you. He walketh around like a roaring lion. Notice the description that Peter gives us. Not a little playful monkey. Not a harmless cow. Not a little chicken. But a roaring lion. A roaring lion scary? If you're in the wilderness by yourself, probably so, right? Um, be sober, be vigilant, your adversary, the devil walketh around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 
Stand firm, it says in verse 9, against him. And be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian and brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. King James says this, Whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And so, Peter not only says to be aware of him, but that we should what? Resist him, all right, or stand against him. Um, we get the idea of standing, Ephesians chapter 6, put on the full armor of God that you might stand against the wiles of the devil. There's a continuation of stand. Who fights the battle? God does. What do we see? What does he require on us to do? To stand. To be sober, be vigilant to your adversary, the devil, walk the roaring li- around like a roaring lion. Um, Jacob, come on up for a second. All right? So, Jacob gets up in the morning, all right? And Jacob takes off walking, right? And behind you, you got to be sober, be vigilant, because who? The devil comes around like a roaring lion. So, every corner, if you just keep walking, all right? You just walk down there by Dave, all right? And just think of your life. You get up in the morning, you go to work, um, you go to lunch, you go to your job. What is Satan always doing? Dave, when he gets by you, you, you be the devil. All right? And so, <laughs> I really don't think the devil sounds like that. Carver, Carver, be the devil. And, and so all of a sudden, wherever you go, the roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? I mean, you could be in your house. Lord knows you could be on your phone, you could be on your computer, you could be in your office, you could be in your car. He walketh around like a roaring lion. Now, when Jacob faces off against the devil, what is his job? Is his job to fight back? What's his job to do? Stand. What's he going to keep doing? Standing. What's he going to keep doing? Standing. Just keep standing. When the devil picks at you in your life, You have to learn. It's not your job to fight. Your job is to what? Stand. What are you going to stand? What does it mean to stand? It means to stand on the faithfulness of God. To remember what Christ Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. To remember that the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, forces of evil. Remember that there's more of us than there is of them. Remember the promises of one who is faithful, that Satan is a defeated foe, that he's already lost lost the great battle. Remember to put on that full armor of God, that breastplate of righteousness. Hold up that shield of faith that we might quench the fiery darts of of, of the devil. And understand that helmet of salvation, um, the sandals of the gospel of peace. um, And and to place on this armor that we might stand against Satan himself. There are a lot of enemies that are trying to take you down. There are a lot of ways that you can fight back. But the Bible says the very main way that you fight back is to stand. Also, when you look at Ephesians chapter 6, it also says in what? Pray. And so, with this picture that he paints out here in, 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 in First Peter, you can have to sit back down. Thank you, Jacob, for your help. In First Peter, you, you see this picture of these Christians scattered around the world. He tells them to look forward to this glorious coming day. He talks about this glorious salvation. He tells them to fall into submission, not only to government, not only to elders, not only to husbands and wives and sons and daughters, as citizens of the kingdom of God. He says that we should fall into submission. Not only should we fall into submission, but understand we are going to suffer. We are going to be persecuted. We are going to face trial. We are going to face trouble. He's closing this out. He tells them to serve one another in humility. He tells them to cast their cares upon the Lord. He tells them to stand against the devil, to stand against Satan, to be aware of his tactics, to be aware of his schemes, to be aware of what he does. Why? Because there's a better day coming. And this earth is going to have many troubles, many trials, many burdens, many hardships, many things that we got to face. The very idea, serve one another in humility, cast your cares upon the Lord, and stand against the devil. You do those three things every day, you're going to be successful in your walk with God. Amen? If you stand up each day and say, you know what, I'm going to serve God, I'm going to serve people willingly, I'm not going to let myself be prideful, but I'm going to walk in humility, I'm going to walk in truth. 
my burdens, my cares, I'm going to cast them on the Lord. For all of you that, that raised your hand and said you have cares today, I ask you the question, have you casted them on God today? Have you left them there? Have you taken your marriage? you taken your children? you taken your finances? you taken your fears? you taken your illnesses? you taken your strongholds? you taken your addictions? you taken your vices? you taken all these things that the world has and cast them up upon the Lord and leave them there? And understand that no matter whether you're in your house, no matter whether if it's a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Sunday, a Saturday, if the day is ending and why, the devil's trying to get you down. And the Bible says that you've got to be aware of him, be aware of his tactics, and stand against his schemes. Amen? Stay alert. Watch out for that great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong. In your faith. Be strong in your faith. One of the biggest problems we have today is we have a lot, we have a, we have a church in America specifically that is not strong in its faith. They're weak in their faith. Amen? That's why we have weak people who preach from pulpits. We have a watered down version of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have a watered down version on sin. We have a watered down version of, of, of our faith in general. Weak faith produces weak results. Amen. Amen? Now think about this. Would you rather fight somebody who's weak or would you rather fight somebody who's strong? Amen? Now, for instance, let's just say, Carver, come up here. Heather, come up here. Now, we're doing this for size, okay? If you were going to pick a fight tonight <laughs> with one of these two people, who are you picking? <laughs> What'd you say, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> really, it depends here, right? All right. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I, I would have brought Glory up, but she'd beat me up. So I don't <laughs> but my point is, if we were just saying, hey, I, I forget her meanness for a second. We don't know that, all right? <laughs> but let's just look at size. Who are you going to pick a fight with? You're going to pick a fight with Heather, aren't you? I mean, now, knowing what I know, I'm still going to pick a fight. He, he knows like 1,200 kinds of jiu-jitsu. And so I, if I'm trying to take one of these down, who am I going to take down? Heather, you think the devil doesn't realize how good your faith is? You think he strategizes his enemy? I think he does. He knows how your spiritual walk is. He knows how your spiritual talk is. He knows how your spiritual game is. You think he knows how many times you pray? Huh? You know, think he knows how your prayer life is? How your time in the Word of God is? You think he knows your weaknesses and your struggles? I think he does his investigation. I think he studies it. I think he tries to figure out. I think he tries to become an opponent. Huh? It's what he does. He's an instigator. He's a troublemaker. He, he tries to tear people's lives down. If your faith is weak, it's going to be a lot easier to destroy you than if your faith is strong. It's that simple. Amen? People who are strong in their faith, Satan really gets upset with that. Why does he keep us from getting strong? He, he wants to keep us from getting stronger in our faith. You guys can sit back down. Think of it. How, how are ways that we grow in our faith? Trials, trials right? Trials is a good one. Um, when you face trials, what, what, there's either two responses. One, you tuck tail and you what? Run. Or you stand up and what? Fight against them, right? Some through the water. Some through the flood. But all through the blood, some through great sorrow. Hey, you guys want to hear a quick funny story? I'm teaching at, at Agape, right? And so Stephanie was like, hey, do you have any idea what graduation is going to be like? And so I was like, well, I played the last one for her from last year. And there's a part in it when the faculty sings. And she's like, you're not going to sing, are you? I was like, yeah, they've asked me to sing. And she said, really? She said, do they know you can't sing? And so today... I said, well, we've got practice tomorrow. So today there's this girl named Carlene Sanderson. She's one of the secretaries. And so I'm leaving there. I said, Carlene, I said, here's Stephanie's cell phone number. Can you text her and tell her that you were just blown away? 
by my singing ability. And she's like, seriously? I was like, yeah. I was like, don't. Just tell her we practiced the song for graduation. And you just had no idea that I could sing like that. So I get home for lunch and Stephanie's like, am I bringing, she, I walk in the door. She's like, am I being pranked? I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, Carlene Sanderson just sent me a text and says that you have, that she reads a text and Carlene did so good. She's like, Andy has the most beautiful, dynamic vocal voice I've ever heard. She's like, I had no idea he could sing like that. And she texted him back. Really? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And so Carlene texts me and she sends me a screenshot of it. And she's like, I think you really need to tell her. I feel bad lying. And uh, so anyway, I kept it going for a little while. And then I had to tell her the truth. But I thought it was funny. Um, nonetheless, when you are strong in your faith, when you're strong in your faith, how do you grow strong in your faith? Reading the word, going through trials, praying, surrounding yourself by a good army, by a good people group, avoiding temptations, Witnessing, sharing your faith. Um, iron sharpens iron. Um, when, when you do all these things and you surround yourself by good godly people and you're constantly in the word, you're abhorring evil temptations. You're getting away from things you shouldn't get away from. You're growing in your faith. You're challenging yourself. When you do face trial, you're not tucking tail and running. You're praying your way through them. God, give me wisdom. God, give me a lesson. God, keep me humble. God, Guide me, direct me, lead me, push me through all these things. And you start to see your faith become strengthened. Um, your prayer life becomes strengthened. When you start praying over things and they come to pass, you remind yourself, hey, I prayed for that. Um, when the Israelites, they went back and they seen the stones, they remembered, hey, God already brought me across this river. And they see the next thing, God already brought me across this. And all of a sudden it grows your faith. Um, do you remember when David came and he was standing before the giant and he's going before Saul and he's like, listen, God, I smote a lion and I smote a bear. Why? Because God had begun to grow his faith. Surely God can lead me through this. And so when you grow in your faith, there's strength in that. Have you ever tried to get involved in reading your word? And you're tempted to do something else? And the phone rings. Phone rings. All of a sudden a nap. A kid comes. There's a knock on the door. You fell asleep saying, you know, you've scrolled Facebook for an hour and you haven't read a, word, a verse of God's word. Right? These things begin to happen and they begin to take over in your life. And you think, man, these are accidents. No, they ain't. No, they're not. Because if you grow in your faith, Satan's scared of that. And so, what do you do? What do you do? Well, here's what we got to do. You got to take away. That's why the verse before says, be what? Be sober, be vigilant. If you get easily distracted, get rid of your distractions. If you need to read the word of God and you can't stay awake, read it out loud. If you get caught up reading Facebook, turn your phone off or you have no access to Facebook. Do something. If you can't intentionally pray, I'm not talking good God, good meat. I'm talking, Lord, lead me, humble me, work on me, work on my marriage, take me to a higher plane, get rid of the sin that's in me, teach me, guide me, direct me, stretch me. If, if we can't have these honest conversations and dialogues of prayer time with God, how in the world can we expect to grow? And a lot of times we'll say, man, when we get to pray, the next thing you know, I've prayed, and next thing you know, I was asleep. Amen? I've prayed and daydreamed in the middle of my prayer. Forgot what I was talking to God about. You ever been there? Amen? Or, well, listen, we, we, Lord, I, I pray this prayer and I, I don't know what to pray about. You know what I've learned to do? I've learned to take notes on what I'm praying. I, I've got a notepad, Lord. And why? Because when I write it down and I begin to pray about it, I can come back and see that God's answered it. Does that make sense? Be intentional in your prayer life. Be intentional in reading the Word. Not just reading like 17 books and saying, Ooh, I read 17 chapters of Moses today. Um, Melanie shared with me a little morsel, right? A little morsel that, 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 you, that, you can, that you can feast upon and you can just let it fill your soul will get you a lot more than 17 chapters of something you don't even know what you read. Amen? So if you can only digest two or three verses, digest two or three verses, but digest them well. Amen? Now... Somebody said, well, I read the Bible through 16 times this year. Praise God. What did it say? Amen? But man, if you can get a few words, a few verses, and you can start taking them and applying them to you. Oh, glory to God. 
Then it can make, hey, but what if you just took Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on our own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path. Just think, if I said, God, improve my trust today. Let me lean upon you. Guide me. Direct me. Just, hey, you know what you've got? You've gotten a morsel that can satisfy your soul. And when you're at work and, and, and man, something, that, that thought enters your mind and you begin to think, man, how am I ever going to get through this? You remind yourself, hey, I read Proverbs 3 earlier and I'm reminded to trust the Lord in what? All things. Well, my bank account's not out of money. I'm trusting the Lord in what? My marriage is struggling. I'm trusting the Lord. My, there's problems with my children. I'm trusting the Lord in all things. I don't understand, God. Oh, that's right. God reminded me that I need to lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him. God, I don't understand this, but I'm going to acknowledge you that you're Lord over this situation. You're Lord over this, this issue. You're Lord over this battle. You're Lord over my life. You're Lord over my family. Y'all with me? And when you start getting little morsels, faith starts getting what? Stronger. And he says, be sober, be vigilant. Walk around, watch be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walked around like a roaring lion, seeking may devour. Stand against him and be strong in your faith. We cannot be weak in our faith. As days go on and times get worse, they will. There has to be a strength in our faith. Amen? I mean a strength in our faith. Specifically, I think one of our greatest battles will be ideologies. Thought processes. Um, with the news that broke this week of Roe v. Wade, um, we haven't even, listen, the surface has started to be scratched. But if and when that ruling comes out, all hell will break loose. I mean, break loose. You will lose friends. You will, mark my words, you will lose friends over that issue right there. You will have problems in your family over that issue right there. And I will tell you why. Because for the very first time in a lot of people's lives, you're going to have to, everybody's going to want to know, what do you think? And you're going to say, well, I believe God creates us in our mother's womb. <laughs> I believe murder's wrong all the time. <laughs> right? Amen? Yeah. And so all of a sudden, our faith is be intersecting with our reality. It's this conversation and these ideologies, and I'm telling you that people are like, man, I, I don't want to talk about it. How can you not talk about life and death, right? How can you not talk about wrong and right? If we can't speak up for wrong and right, how in the world can we stand, stand against the adversary and stand against uh, those, those enemies that are trying to destroy us? And so as this begins to come out and pour out, man, it, you, you got to have, there's got to have faith. And just on a note of that, as this boils down, I mean, I'm sure you all know this by now. This doesn't solve the case of abortion. Still in our state, abortion will be legal. It'll push it back to the states. And it eventually, more than likely, it'll go back to the Supreme Court because somebody somewhere has to decide. Let me rephrase that. Somebody somewhere has to decide what line of thinking you, we're going to believe in. Now, we in this room, we believe that life begins at the moment of conception. Therefore, at any given time after that, abortion is wrong. Murder is wrong. Anytime you destroy that baby for any given reason, it's wrong. Okay? Now, that's a tough stance. Now, people will say, well, what about babies who have problems such as Down syndrome or tumors or something like that? God doesn't make accidents. Period. Amen? They're uniquely and wonderfully made. Amen? Um, you, and they'll give you the very worst case scenario. They were raped and they have a baby and it's deformed and all these things. Listen, which isn't thousands and hundreds and millions of babies. You're talking single digits. You understand me? That's the rarity of that happening. And so some states will come back and they're, and they're going to they're gonna allow for instances like that. And I will know in this room, I will tell you that I, I'm not for abortion in any situation. But that's a still a huge victory for the Christian faith. I mean, you're talking, it takes away from thousands and it brings it down to literally, I mean, single digits. I mean, a vast amount of children will be saved. Um, and so these are good conversations. It's a good thing that we have. 50 years, if, if this country would turn around and honor God, we could see some cool things happen. I mean, this could be, you know, this is a good thing. 
But I will tell you that it will cause a great uproar. Anytime you upset sin, it causes a great uproar. Stay alert. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. You're not alone in what you face. Amen? You say, man, nobody has to go through what I do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Some of them, in America, we have it very easy. You go around the world, they have it a lot harder than we do. Peter's final words. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. Peter says, I have written and sent this short letter to you with the help of Silas, which I commend to you as a faithful brother. My purpose in writing is to encourage you and assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. Stand firm in his grace. Your sister church here in Babylon sends you greetings. And so does my son Mark. Greet each other with Christian love. Peace be with you all who are in Christ. And so all these words, and Peter puts this personal twist on it, because why he's writing to specific people. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. Be honored. And understand that God is doing a work, not just where you are, but all over the world. And there will come a day when Christ Jesus will restore all things and make all things brand new. Amen? All right, we've accomplished the book of 1 Peter. Way to go. What do you think, Davey? Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy it? What are you going to take tonight away from our lesson? Yeah, yeah, you can get a lot of questions. I have uh, my class doing a project right now. They've got to go out and do three, three interviews, and they're videoing them, okay? And the first question, they've got to ask three questions to three different people. And the first question is, do you believe in a heaven or hell? Second question is, how do you get there? And the third question is, if you died today, which one would you go to and why? And so they're due on Monday. I'm excited to watch the videos. They can't, I've already taken, I've practiced, I've done practice interviews with every one of them and given them all types of fun answers, you know, to kind of help them deal with it. But I think it's good, right? It'll sharpen their faith. It'll help them get on, what people understand. So we'll see how it works out. Do they have to interview one stranger, one friend, one family member. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Man, Miss Carol will be on me. I've got to send that on the prayer chain. Yes, tomorrow is National Day of Prayer. I am so thankful you said that. The church is open from 6.30 to a.m. to 6 p.m. And we will be celebrating National Day of Prayer here. You can come and pray at any given time. Miss Carol always sits right out there and waits. The doors are locked so nobody can get in. And she lets them in one at a time. So I encourage you to come. There's something special about coming and praying on this day. I'm so thankful you reminded me of that. Great job. All right, God bless you all. You are dismissed. Don't forget about the things this weekend. Big stuff happening.